This is pretty, isn't it? Well, mods for KSP just got an update and made everything a lot better. And in this video we're going to talk about it, especially this volumetric cloud mod. But let's just look at it first. Hello everybody and welcome. It's been a while since my last video and the reason for that is, well, instead of just reporting on games and making videos about games, I decided to spend the past few weeks of my free time to actually play games. And the effect of that was that I got back into KSP a little bit, Cover Space Program, for those of you who don't know the abbreviation. If you don't, why don't you? Anyway, what you can see here is the latest iteration of the volumetric cloud mod by Graphics Wizard Blackrack. And not only that, I've also installed his deferred lighting mod, which is also doing reflections on the ground, as you have seen there. We have thunderstorms. Yes, a big flash and thunder that was just happening there. Flash, well, uh, lightning, actually. <laughs> And as you can also see, we have some rain drops falling down. And when the rain is falling down, we can now get puddles on the floor, which are forming over time and which will also display some drops happening down there. And once the sun is back out, those are going to dry out again and restore the surface as it was before. Blackrack, of course, is also currently employed by the team for Kitten Space Agency to bring his magic over there. But for some reason, in the meantime, while he was doing that, he also found time to work on his KSP mod, which is available, unfortunately, only via Patreon for a monthly subscription. But of course, you can only sign up for one month, download the mod, and then enjoy this visual splendor for your favorite space simulation game. I mean, look at that. We have realistic reflections, we have realistic clouds, we have weather patterns. And I'm just going to let this footage run here so you can appreciate the splendor that we can now enjoy in Kerbal Space Program. And I think Blackrag has set the bar pretty high for Kitten Space Agency, which he is currently working on, to one day reach the same bar it is it does here. But another game I have played in the meantime was No Man's Sky, and in those there are some interesting spaceships like this one, and I thought, well, Maybe I can recreate this in Kerbal Space Program. And, well, it has a pretty bonkers way of transforming, as you have seen just a few seconds ago. So, what's going on here? Let's look at that mechanism a little bit in more detail. First off, let's land. The wings are folding in and they're turning weirdly and then they're laying down. And for some reason, they're kind of in the air in between. So, what's going on there? I tried to recreate that in Kerbal Space Program and this is the result. And I'm making copious use, of course, of the robotics parts that were introduced with the Breaking Ground expansion a few years back. Yeah, Kerbal Space Program, unfortunately, is no longer being developed. And the reason for that is also because the publisher Take-Two decided to, well, sell off the property to some private equity firm and nobody knows what's going to happen with the intellectual property now. I made a couple of videos on that, and if you're interested in how all of that works, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, because whether or not there is going to be an update, I'm going to report on that. Uh, also, I'm reporting currently a lot on the updates happening around Kitten Space Agency, which is currently seen as the most viable spiritual successor for Global Space Program, at least in my humble opinion. All right, now that we got that weird No Man's Sky type ship working with, as I said, robotics parts and a lot of weird flying because it's super <laughs> unstable and I also had to enable infinite fuel, but that's par for the course because the vehicle in No Man's Sky also has infinite levels of fuel for a normal flight. We're now entering the storm system and I mean... <laughs> This would be really dangerous if you do that with a real aircraft, but here in Kerbal Space Program, we don't care about these things, and it's just awesome to witness. Also here, if you notice the raindrops, I think they're 
kind of be uh, reacting to the lighting so they get a little bit brighter and darker depending on, on whether or not lightning strikes. And depending on our speed, they're also not moving just vertically, but also more horizontally. Horizontally? That's now a word. <laughs> All right, and now we have the perspective from a bit more afar and we can see all the, all those details and all those different cloud layers and cloud formation styles. What we'll also see in the background is lightning lighting up the clouds from within. There should be one coming up just right about now. Yes, there it was. And also, well, in No Man's Sky, well, you can reach outside of the atmosphere in about five seconds in Kerbal Space Program, even with unlimited fuel, it takes a little bit more. So I think the planets in KSP are a lot larger and it's a lot more difficult to get into space. And look at that gorgeous display and all of those clouds hanging around. And of course, as I said, we're going to try to leave the atmosphere with this contraption. And the way it's built, it's going to, of course, have a lot of aerodynamic drag. Even if we had enough fuel for like a normal trip to orbit, which is in Kerbal Space Program roughly around 3000, 3500 meters per second of delta V. Well, I don't think we would make it in this because of all of those parts causing drag to that vehicle. And we're now heading into the upper parts of the atmosphere with all those beautiful lighting effects for re-entry, which is not a mod by Blackrack. This is another mod and it's free and uh, something just happened. What was it? Well, we killed our pilot. Hmm. Again. That's of course not good if the pilot is dead. So... <laughs> Uh, I decided to head on over to Lathe, where, according to the changelog for the volumetric cloud mod, there were some improvements for Lathe volcanoes, which you can already see in the background over there. Lathe, of course, is a moon of the gas giant Joule, and it has an oxygen-rich atmosphere, so jet engines will work over here. And the composition of the atmosphere is a bit different, so you can see some interesting new color schemes over there and if you've played Kerbal Space Program 2 which uh, also Blackrack worked on for the atmosphere and cloud stuff then you might have noticed a bit of a similar color pat palette happening here and now we're closer to the volcanoes we can give them a good once over and look at them in more detail and it's really thick and I I don't know. I think nothing will happen if I fly through them, but for some reason I was scared to do so. <laughs> so yeah, in real life you should never fly through the ash cloud of a volcano, of course. But we can fly around it and we can already see a difference in lighting which is, called by the, uh, which is caused by the scatterer mod over there. And this is really interesting to look at. And if we zoom out a little bit more, we can see it in more detail or the god rays happening at scale over here. This is really beautiful. But Lathe and Kerbin are of course not the only planets with atmospheres. And one that's also pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> is Eve, where there's something I like to call cloud cathedrals, at least in this volumetric cloud mod. As I mentioned before, the mod is not free. Uh, if you would like to experience this, you have to pay for it. But since Kerbal Space Program has been around for more than 10 years, and if you're like me and you have played it for roughly 6,000 hours or more, then adding a couple of bucks more to it, I don't regard that as a big issue. Then again, there is probably some pirated version somewhere around which is a shame because, I mean, look at what Black Rack provided here. That's really some A-grade work that he made for this game. And I really appreciate him taking the time to do this for the KSP community, for Kerbal Space Program, to keeping it alive and keeping it interesting for all us players. Also interesting, 
let's see if we can land this contraption. Because in No Man's Sky, you just press a button and the landing just works. Here you have to press a lot more buttons and it's a lot more difficult and yeah. Again. Well, those crashes won't happen in No Man's Sky. You can't really destroy your shell, the, or the hull of your vehicles there. But in the end, after a few attempts, I managed to get a smoother approach to the Coral Space Center. You can still see the puddles of water on the ground there, in the grass, and also on the runway. And now we're going to reverse our transformation and then touch down safely in the grass. A little bit harder than I liked, but it happens. And of course, we also have saved the pilot this time. He did not explode. Well, that was a quick look at the volumetric cloud mod update. Thanks again, as always, to all my loyal supporters over on Patreon. If you like what I do here and you want to support this channel, you can head on over to Patreon where you can get all of my videos ad free. And the people you have seen here, they have signed up for a bit of a higher tier, so your name could show up here as well. And of course, we have the YouTube membership that you could also take if you don't like Patreon. And if you don't want to support me financially, as I said, subscribing would be fine or leaving a like or a comment where you can tell me how wrong I am about everything. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.